Hi everyone and welcome to yet another RSWAT scripting lesson. This is going to be lesson 4 and <coughs> we're going to discuss the creation of our first script and uh, uh, creating the variables we're going to use in that script. So, first of all, before creating any script, you must actually know uh, what your script is going to do. In my case, um, I've got here a var request miner I was making, so we'll just use this um, this theme for the script we'll be making. So if we wanted to make a Baroque request miner, we would first of all go to the default package on our project. And we create a new Java class, and we can name it. Um, a, a decent name for our script, since it's going to be a Varrock West Miner, we can name it Varrock West something like that. I've already got one called Varrock West Miner, so I can't name it the same. <coughs> so now, just delete this comment. Yeah. And the first thing we have to do in order to change our uh, standard Java class to an um, RSPOT script is to make it extend um, the class script and this will make our class inherit therefore uh, have some of the methods uh, the script class has um, these methods are the loop the on start and the on finish if we add the uh, abstract methods we'll see only the loop we must override the previous methods, so we're overriding the methods from the script class and uh, when we run our script we'll use these methods here instead of those that are by default in the script class. So that's the on start. We can add more things to it of course. and we have to import yellow map. So once we've got that, we've got our main uh, methods, which is the loop, which will be run over and over again whilst the script is running, the on start, which will be executed on the start of the loop, hence the name, and finally the on finish, which uh, you may suppose is executed at the, s at the end of the script. So creating our variables um, is a very simple thing. The first thing we have to notice is which variables we're going to have to use. So in my var request minor script, which is here, I used uh, some tiles, um, some IDs of the RNA strings in place, some IDs of the pickaxes, the ID of the bank, and the R style arrays are the, the paths I'm going to follow. So the first styles are the iron, tin, clay and silver locations. So the best spots where our character is going to stand in order to mine iron, tin, clay or silver. Um, the bank location is the tile where the bank is. Uh, we will not uh, use this in our script except uh, we could use it to generate our path. But since uh, the new API is coming out, uh, we can no longer generate paths on runtime at least not that I know of. So we'll have to look for our own path. So this is not going to be very useful in our new script. Then th these IDs are the IDs of the rocks. So 11955 and 11956 are the IDs of the iron rock for example and we'll use these IDs to click the rocks and therefore mine the ores. Um, this array of integers uh, in this array of integers will be stored uh, the values selected by the user. So if the user selects to mine irons, then these IDs uh, will be placed into these array and therefore in our script, uh, for example here, uh, we will use always the variable ores to mine and not iron ores or tin ores. So therefore our user will select one of these 
and then their values will be placed in the auth to mine variable and we'll use this variable in our script instead of any of these uh, so that uh, actually our user can be able to select which ores he or she wants to mine. So what we must uh, create now is uh, the main path will walk from the dam to the mine and then another path which will just be the reverse of that path. Uh, so if we go to our spot and we open it think I'll be able to um, just uh, let me well I did I did open it so never mind so what we have to find uh, is the location of our player at every point uh, of the path I can't find it um, so that's what we would need so if you see my previous tutorial uh, where you see how to find the path and you have just to walk <laughs> from the current tile to the next tile of the, the actual path you would like to follow in order to walk from the bank to the mine and then just add that to an other style array uh, just like so Obviously, substituting a thousand, a thousand for the values of x and y, your player's position debugging option uh, gives you. And so on. You would just add new val values here with your comma. So that would be the path. And then uh, to change it, to, to reverse it, you can just use the reverse path method. And to call that method, you just call the singleton uh, object of the walking class called walking, but with a um, lowercase fully, and then the dot and reverse path. Uh, so this tells us that the reverse path method takes in as a parameter an R style array, and that it is included inside the walking class. This is a class that contains most of the walking uh, methods. So if we were to add that to our VW miner, we would just either copy and paste, or we could uh, write them all from the beginning. We know we need the IDs of the ores, And then another I int for the ores we're going to mine. Then we need pickaxes. And finally the paths we will follow. And we have to import our style of the, like, the uh, red line of view and the locations um, I'm just going to copy and paste those of course we have to add private to all of these that uh, will make our script more memory efficient and we have to import our style so I'll explain why private makes uh, um, our script more efficient in my forum you can visit uh, it by following the link below and apart from that uh, we would just move the values uh, from the script to that one or we would look uh, using our spot for new values should we be using a different mine. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to gathering our variables. We must first think about which variables we're going to need and then uh, create uh, the data types uh, that we need. Finally, implement the values by gathering them with uh, the our spot client as we saw in the last tutorial. Uh, so just remember to subscribe, comment and rate 
and press the like button and that's it i hope you enjoyed it and good luck programming